I'm pretty excited about this next destination. We're driving to Komrat. It's the capital of, I believe, the world's smallest autonomy called Gagauzia. It is a part of Moldova that is inhabited by Turks, well, Turkic people who speak Turkish. As a Turk, let me tell you, it sounds like Turkish, but maybe with a Balkan accent. Look at this Soviet gas station. <laughs> anyway, Turkic people, but they are Orthodox Christian. So I find that to be interesting. So this autonomous territorial unit of Gogosia, this land of Christian Turks, um, declared independence in 1990, um, and Moldova said nope, and then they did it again in 1991, and then Moldova said, look, we'll put it in our constitution, this was during the breakup of the Soviet Union, that if we ever join Romania, you guys can be your own country. And Gagosia said okay, so they're a part of Moldova now. They just had a referendum in 2014, actually, asking um, if they preferred EU over Russia because Moldova's been making moves to the EU and the overwhelming majority of uh, the Gagosians voted, we'd rather be with Russia. So we'll see what happens in the future. Entering Aneninoi. Not counting our visit to Transnistria a few years ago, this is our second Lenin statue in Moldova. Those giant hands. There's something so comforting looking at a Lenin statue. It's so cuddly, very like grandfatherly. Here's the building you saw behind Lenin. Still not in Gagauzia. We're in a town called Sipala, just driving through, and I saw this World War II monument. All the names here are in Cyrillic. They all died in 1945. Signs have uh, Romanian spelling and Turkish spelling. Komrat and Komrat. <laughs> Driving down Lenin Street in Komrat. What better welcome to Gagos could there be on Lenin Street than our third Lenin statue? Just checked into our hotel. The receptionist could only speak Russian or Turkish. No Romanian. It's one of the reasons um, Gagos which I think the Turks may say differently. They might say Gagauz, became uh, its own autonomous area. Moldova declared Romanian to be the official language, and the people here who spoke Russian and Turkish didn't like that too much. The Mustafa Kemal Ataturk Library, written in Gagauz, Turkish, Romanian, and Russian. And there's the man, Ataturk, founder of Modern day Turkey. On all the light posts along this street, Lenin Street, you have the Soviet star. Well, these Turks, the Gagauz, are Christian Orthodox, so might as well look at one of their churches. There's John the Baptist's head on a plate.
there. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Da, da, da. That's a good one. No. No. Yet. Higher. You have to speak to the animals in four languages here. You never know which one they understand. It's Moldova. It's Gagosia. Some traditional Gagos dessert called Krush or something like that. Krush. We don't go onto tables in this family. So, in this part of Moldova, they speak Gagos and. Uh, our waitress is going to count to ten in Gagoz. More donations for the Ukrainians. So the, uh, the traditional Gagoz house seems very much like back home in Romania, doesn't it, Stein? Yeah. Opinch. We call them Maramuresh. Same shoes as in Romania. Lenin's face on a, looks like a commemorative coin. I think it's a Soviet ID. So this was our restaurant. Gagos Sofrese. Russian beer. It's another Russian beer from Moscow. Have you ever seen tubes of ice cream? Now you have. <laughs> how do you how do you extract the ice cream from it? I wonder. You like squeeze it out. Our hotel feels very sterile. Everyone in Moldova swears by these. Fish snacks goes great with uh, goes great with beer. These are uh, anchovies, I think. Oh my yeah, those are anchovies. Very salty. It's interesting, right? Moldova's a landlocked country, but there's fish snacks everywhere. But you do need beer to wash it down. Yeah. Much better with beer, as it says here. <coughs> I don't like it. Looking at the Comrat House of Culture. Second day in Gagosia. We'll look at some museums, eat some of the Gagosian food, drink some Gagosian wine. See what happens. Sound like a plan? A monument to the Soviet soldiers lost in Afghanistan. Ben is I in Turkish, and look how they're writing I in Gagosian. Abu, Chakmaktasha, Kremni. You're breaking the grain. Just listen to the sound of Gagosia. It's, it's Turkish with a thick accent. This is the Gago shepherd. And the numbers are carved on his staff here. These are how Gagosians write their numbers. Mm -hmm. The pluses, the circles, the lines, the chip marks. So Gagosia also has a female president. Soviet radio, Soviet television. Soviet phonograph. Look at the church well. Right behind the church is this surprise Soviet World War II monument.
or the flame, the eternal flame. And a Soviet era mosaic. Back in Komrat, this is the monument to the Great Patriotic War, and they have a, an eternal flame going. The man standing over the woman, protecting her, it symbolizes fighting for the motherland. 1986, this is a monument to the victims of Chernobyl. a photo of Chernobyl. See, 100. I didn't lie. This is the Alley of Gagosian Glory. We got some busts of the uh, glorified Gagos. Dmitri Kara Choban. You've heard of him? Now there's a look. Monument to the Victims of Political Repression. That's what that says. That's how they spell Komrat and Gagosian. Here's a monument to soldiers fallen in Afghanistan. The symbol of Komrat. So this is what sheep shit turned into fuel looks like. And this uh, knife-like object is how you cut the sheep shit. This is pretty cool. Attach this to a horse. Put seeds in here. You can open and close the wheel here. So it plows the land, lays the seeds. This lemon bust used to be in a school. <laughs> And that's a Gagos uh, politician on the left. So this man is Gagos. He lives in Moscow now, and he's running all of the Russian embassies. This lady is head of the Gagos Autonomous Land. And she's very loved around here and is a good friend with Putin. That Hundred Years Monument we saw earlier was about this revolution here. Gagos flag. A carpet, 150 years old, showing the tradition of a man kidnapping his pending bride. Crosses they used to have in the old days. The Gagos language is 90% Turkish, but they are not Muslim. They are, they are Christian Orthodox. And this is a baptismal font. Gagos instruments, phonograph, TV, and radio, all in one. They don't make them like this anymore. A gift from Belarus. This wall shows all the gifts from Turkey. A gift from, a gift from Germany, perhaps? <laughs> Small dance. It was better. It was better USSR. There's a Russian computer versus American IBM. <laughs> Bulgarlar Ukraine, 
her birin e, portusunu ve her birin kulturasını e, bir yerde oturuyoruz bir sofraya e, bir imik bir yerde yapıyoruz biz yaşıyoruz e, ne diyor bu toprakta anlaşıyoruz güzel iyi hepsi iyi çok güzel sen çok güzel no bizim e, <laughs> We're driving now to the oldest winery in southern Moldova. It's Comrade Wines, and we've been assured by the museum that drinking and driving is entirely accepted, encouraged here in Moldova. There it be. What a lovely looking winery. Gago's mussels, some Gago's olives, Gago's caviar, some ooh, Gago's pork fat, Gago's cheese, Gago's wine from the Comrade Winery, Gago's zakuska, Gago's lamb bover, Gago's pie, Gago's cheesecake. Enjoy. Hayır, hayır, hayır. Again. Hayır. <laughs> I heard tell of a golden Lenin statue in Chadarlunga. Driving to there now, obviously. What have we here? So we're entering the Gagos town of Tomai. This is a Soviet welcome if I've ever seen one. entrance to Tomai has a well. Traditional gagos. There's one of those Gago's wine casks I saw in the museum yesterday. I'm beginning to think that every main street in Gagauzia is named Lenin Street. We're driving down Lenin Street right now in Chadar Lunga. And what Lenin Street would have no statue of Lenin? No Lenin Street. No Lenin Street at all. It's as bright as the sun. So the Gagos might love them a Lenin, but it's not very well maintained. Well, that was fantastic. So now we're leaving Gagauzia to get back into Gagauzia, an exclave uh, called Volkanesht. Volkanesht is right up against Odessa in Ukraine. In fact, we're going to be driving along the Ukraine border most of the way now. <laughs> we're still in Gagauzia. This is a World War II monument in Kazayak. Next to the monument, this government building has some Soviet artwork.
just past this coming the other way, turning around to look at it, this side. Goodbye, Kazayak. And we just left Gagauzia, driving now to the exclave. What is that? What is that white stuff on the edge? What is it? It's ice. 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 Look at that. So it's ice that was just pushed up on the edge here. That's Ukraine right in front of us there. So we got Gagauzia straight ahead, coming up to Volkanesht. All along our left is Ukraine. To the right is Moldova. Ukraine is just beyond that vineyard. And here's the border crossing to Ukraine. So we're not crossing into Ukraine today, but there's no one coming in and no one going out. The border's open though. So it looks like that's a good place to cross if I was fleeing Ukraine. All right, we're back in Gagauzia. And that says Volkanesht. Looking back. First stop in Volkanesht. This column commemorates the glorious Russian victory over the Ottomans in 1770. It's crumbling. All right, Bianca for scale. This is a really big column. What's this? Is it sausage? Look at this, Lenin statue number five. I thought after that beautiful golden statue of Lenin in Chaturlunga, I would never be excited about a Lenin statue again. How could I, I was wrong. And behind this Lenin statue, this building here on the top, it says Communist Party of Moldova. RSSM in Cyrillic. Benim benim buban buban vardı toprakları buban çok Romun vakıda 1918. yılda açan geldi Rus aldı buban topraklarını aldı tabu geldi tabu aldı te toprakları aldı biz kaldık komünizmaya. Okay. Tele. Teşekkür ederim. Further conversation with that gentleman. He said there was only one Lenin in all of Moldova and then we just listed about 12. He was very impressed and excited. He doesn't like Lenin, but he was interested to know where all of the statues were in Moldova. Yes, this is where we live. We said Romania and Ceausescu Caput. Breakfast, finally. Three construction workers just came in, did some shots of vodka, went back to work. The top economic contributor in Gagauzia is wine export, so I thought for our last stop in this autonomous region, we would see a small winery. We're gonna get in? You gonna make a call? Yeah. Uh, Chokasau. Chokasau. <laughs> uh, 
Nu, eu din România. Din România? De unde? Din România? Din Cluj, la Foca. O, departe, departe. Filin, Filin Sprachen. Ei, Filin Sprachen. Deutsch, Rusiș, Ruminiș, Gagauze, Turchiș. O, mă, da. Pichească, neagră, und saperavi. Am nădăm. Am nădăm, răsă, mă. So, this is unique, unique to here. Das ist Ciotra. Karagani makes about 10,000 bottles a year. Uh, Siz adın ne? Adım? George. 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 Ne oldu? Vot, vot. Çotra, Cabernet Sauvignon, British Senatli, Mondus Vini, Gold. Bu çok şey mi? Da. Puşok is the name. Puşok. Puşok. Hello, Puşok. Dormis in Moldova. Uh, la un hotel, nu știu exact cum se numește. Da, da, da. Sun panel, how we call it? Solar panel. Solar yeah, panel. This is the collection only, you can't buy it. It's uh, black wine. 2016? Because it's black. Okay. So there's another better crossing. Yeah. Uh, where you don't need to pay money to get in Moldova. Huh? Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, we are. I think it's a little bit of 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 a little Salut. Salut, zdrowie. Health. Yeah. Thank. And then the other. Kismet. Kismet. Kismet is like service or luck. Okay. Luck. Bereket, bogatstvo. Wallet. Money. Yeah, wallet. Bereket, money. Uzun yömür, ete multe in lume, no, trim, trim, trim in lume, multe, multe. For us to live a long time and live a lot of things. Sağlık, sağlık, kısmet, bereket, uzun ömür. Çok güzel. Gollywood. Вот это. Ah, ah, yes, perfect. Посмотри, посмотри на себя. I asked Georgi at the end, was life better during USSR times or now? And he said no, because he can own his own winery. Um, that is a wrap. Uh, Gagauzia. Till next time.